Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing great. Students, if you have a choice between living a luxurious and comfortable life but in a cage or a life full of struggle and in freedom, what will you choose? Chandni had the same choice. Who is Chandni and what was her choice? Let's see in the chapter Chandni, class 7th chapter of supplementary book An Alien Hand. In this part, we will read that Abu Khan kept goats as pets. He loved his goats, but they left him one by one. He bought a young pretty goat and called her Chandni. So Abu Khan was a person who kept goats as pet, but his goats would run away one by one. And finally, he bought a young and pretty goat and named her Chandni. So Chandni is the name of one of Abu Khan's goats. Once upon a time, there lived an old man in Almora. Almora is a hilly area, hilly place in Uttarakhand. He was popularly known as Abu Khan. He lived all alone except for a few goats which he ke always kept as pets. He gave his goats funny names such as Kalua, Mungia or Gujri. He would take them out for grazing during the day and talk to them as one talks to one's own children. At night, he would bring them back to his little hut and put a string around the neck of each goat. So Abu Khan was an old man who lived in the hilly areas of Almora. He lived all alone except for few goats which he kept as pets and gave them funny names. So in the daytime, Abu Khan used to take them out for grazing and he would, use, he would talk them as if the goats were his own children. At night, he would bring them back and in his little hut and he would tie a string around their necks. Poor Abu Khan was a little unlucky in the matter of his goats. Very often at night, one of the goats would pull and pull at the string till it broke loose and then would disappear in the hills beyond. Goats in hilly regions hate being tied to trees or poles. They love their freedom. Abu Khan's goats were of the best hill breed. They too loved their freedom. So whenever they got the chance, they would run away only to get killed by an old wolf who, would live, who lived in the hills. So Abu Khan was unlucky in the matter of goats because very often one of the goats would pull the string until it broke and then that goat would, would just run away towards the hills beyond. In hilly areas, goats, they hate being tied to trees or poles. And Abu Khan's goats were one of the best breeds of hilly areas. They also loved their freedom. So whenever they got chance, they would just pull the string and break free and run away into the hills. And there lived an, a wolf in the hills who would kill Abu Khan's goats. Whenever one of his goats disappeared, Abu Khan was very sad. He did not understand why even the juiciest grass and grains that he gave them and all the love that he showered on them would not stop these unfortunate goats from running straight into the jaws of death. Are these goats mad? He wondered. Or was it their love for freedom? But freedom meant struggle, hardship, even death. Abu Khan couldn't solve the mystery. So whenever one of his goats would disappear, Abu Khan would be very sad and he couldn't understand why his goat would always run away. Even the best and tastiest grass and grains he gave to these goats couldn't stop them from running away straight to the wolf, straight to the jaw of death. They would just run to the hills to get killed. So Abu Khan was just, he used to just wonder, are these goats mad or is this their love for freedom that they just run away? And Abu Khan also knew that freedom means struggle. It is hardship and sometimes even you have to die for freedom. And Abu Khan couldn't solve this mystery that why would his goat just run away? One day, when all his goats had left him, Abu Khan said to himself, No more goats in my house ever again. I may yet live for a few more years, but I live without goats. However, the poor old man was terribly lonely. He simply couldn't do without his pets. Very soon, he bought a young goat. He thought a young goat will stay with, him, with me much longer. She will soon begin to love me as well as the food. I gave her every day. She will never want to go to the hills and he laughed with joy. So Abu Khan's goats loved freedom. They used to run away and one day when all of his goat had run away and left him, Abu Khan said to himself that he's not going to bring any more goat in the house. 
again he thought that he will live for few more years and he will live without goats but soon this poor old man he was feeling terribly lonely very lonely and he couldn't stay without pet and he bought a very young goat he thought a young goat will stay with him for a long time and that young goat will start loving him and the food that he would give to the goat and will never leave him for the hills for the freedom and he was happy he laughed with joy the new goat was very pretty she was white as snow and had two little horns on her little head and a pair of gleaming red eyes she had a friendly temperament temperament means nature and would listen to abu khan's tales with lot of interest and affection abu khan called her chandni which means moonlight he loved chandni and would narrate to her stories of all his friends who were dead and gone so this new young goat that abu khan brought she was very pretty she was white as snow she has two little horns little head and a pair of shining eyes and she was very friendly she would listen to abu khan's story with lot of interest abu khan gave gave this goat the name chandni which meant moonlight and he loved chandni he would tell her the stories of all his friends who had gone or who were dead several years passed chandni was still there abu khan believed that chandni would never live leave his compound for the free and fresh air of the hills beyond alas he was mistaken again so after many years also chandni was still there and abu khan believed that chandni would never leave him for fresh air and freedom beyond the hills but again he was wrong in this part we will read that like other goats chandni to miss the hills she told abu khan she must have her freedom the story of the dangerous wolf in the forest did not discourage chandni so like all other goats chandni also wanted freedom will she get it let's see in this part every morning chandni watched the hill tops bathed in the sunlight how beautiful those hills are she thought how refreshing the breeze that blows through them and how lovely to run across those green fields she ran towards the hills but had to stop with a jerk the rope round her neck wouldn't let her go any further how she hated that rope so every morning chandni would see the hill tops which were bathed with sunlight that means sunlight fell on the hill tops and she would be just fascinated by those beautiful hills she would think to herself that this these breeze the is so refreshing it would be so nice to just run through it run across the green fields she would run towards the hill but would stop with a jerk because rope was tied around her neck and she hated that rope she stopped eating the green grass abu khan brought for her nor did she listen to his stories with interest and affection she lost her appetite appetite means hunger grew very thin and stared moodily at the hill tops bathed in sunlight abu khan did not understand chandni's anguish anguish means pain or suffering now chandni since she saw those hill tops she stopped eating the green grass that abu khan has brought she lost interest in his stories she lost her hunger and she became very thin and she would just look at those hill tops in in um, in a moody way and abu khan could not understand why chandni why this nature of chandni why she is suffering at last she decided to speak to him frankly frankly means in an open honest and direct manner so at last she decided to speak to abu khan and she said dear abu khan let me go to the hills please if i stay on in your compound i'll die so finally she spoke her heart that she wanted freedom she wanted to go to the hills now abu khan understood chandni's problem but it made him very unhappy unhappy the earthen pot which contained chandni's breakfast fell from his hands and broke into a thousand pieces so when abu khan heard this he was very shocked now he understood why chandni was so moody why chandni was so sad and unhappy but this made abu khan very unhappy and the pot that he had brought which contained chandni's breakfast it fell from his hand and it broke into pieces why do you want to leave me chandni abu khan asked i want to go to the hills chandni answered don't you like the food here i'll give you tastier food and a much longer rope no thank you let me go to the hills 
Do you realize the risk you are running? You obstinate, obstinate means stubborn creature. There is a danger of wolf in the heels. He'll eat you up. Abu Khan did his best to warn her. Chandni answered, God has given me a pair of horns. I will fight the wolf. So when Chandni said that she wants to go to the hills, Abu Khan was surprised and he said, Why do you want to leave me? Don't you like the food here? I'll give you much tastier food. But Chandni said, No, thank you. Just let me go to the hills. That means she wanted freedom. She wanted to run to the freedom. Then Abu Khan even warned her. He told her about the danger that don't you re uh, realize, don't you know that there is a dangerous wolf? He will eat you up. But Chandni had only one answer that she wants freedom. She said that God has given her a pair of horns with which he would, she would fight the wolf. Fight the wolf indeed. Have you forgotten the story of your sister Kalwa who was the uh, size of a big deer? She fought the wolf through the night but was killed in the morning. Abu Khan narrated Kalwa's stories for the 15th time. So Abu, when Chandni said that I will fight with him with my horns, then Abu Khan said, have you forgotten the story of your sister Kalwa? Abu Khan had told her the story of Kalwa about 15 times. He said that your sister was much bigger, the size of a big deer. She fought the wolf throughout the night, but she was killed in the morning. So Abu Khan was trying to warn Chandni and scare Chandni. To all this, Chandni had one thing that to say, I want to go to the hills. But Chandni had freedom in her mind and she did not listen. She just wanted to go to the hills. Abu Khan got very annoyed. He got very irritated. He thundered. Thundered means he shouted in anger. You are not going anywhere from today. You are not going anywhere. From today, you will live in a small hut and not move around freely in the compound. Ungrateful as you are. Ungrateful means unthankful. You must still be saved from the wolf. He pushed her into a small hut and shut the door. But he forgot to close the small window at the back. The same night Chandni made that window her passage to freedom. So now Abu Khan was very angry and he shouted that you are ungrateful, you are unthankful. But still you should be saved. And he just put her in a small hut and shut the door. But he forgot to shut a small window which was at the back. And Chandni made her way to freedom at the same night. She jumped from that window. Now in this part we will read that Chandni went back to the hills. She knew the wolf was somewhere there. She was ready to put up a good fight. So finally she went into the freedom. But what will become of her? Let's see in this part. Chandni reached the hills. It seemed to her that the old hills were standing in a row to welcome her. So she was very happy to go to the freedom and it felt to her that the hills are there to welcome her. She felt like a child meeting her parents after years of separation. Wherever she went, the tall grass rose to embrace her. Embrace her means hug her. So she felt that uh, as if she was a child who had been separated from the parents and wherever she went, the tall grass was there to welcome her, to hug her. The flowers bloomed to amuse her. Amuse means to delight her, to make her happy. Even the flowers were blooming to make her happy. And the wind sang an endless song of welcome and the freedom was so much that she was think she was feeling as if everybody is welcoming her. She was very happy. How different all this was from her past in the prison house of Abu Khan's compound. It was the happiest day in Chandni's life. So she thought that it is so different from that prison house of Abu Khan and she was very happy. It was the happiest day of her life. That day she played for hours on the grassy slopes of the hills. She met a herd of wild goats who asked her to join their group but Chandni politely refused. She wanted to enjoy her new freedom all by herself. So that day she played for long hours across the grass in the slopes of the hills. She even met a group of wild goats who asked her to join their group. But Chan Chandni very politely, she said no, she refused because she wanted to enjoy her new freedom. She wanted to enjoy all by herself. The sun disappeared beyond the hills and soon darkness enveloped the grass. So soon the day was over and night was coming. 
the flowers and the trees, the wind stopped blowing and there was stillness all around except for a strange sound which was coming from the bushes. So every, everywhere it was getting dark, wind stopped blowing and there was quietness except for a strange growling, strange sound that was coming from the bushes, from the shrubs which were there. The sound was like a grunt. What was it? It was like a grunt at me, at me as if somebody was making light sound. But what was it? It wasn't Abu Khan's voice calling her back to the compound, nor was it voice of an another goat. So Chani just thought, whose sound is it? It was not Abu Khan's voice who was calling her back to the compound. It was not the sound of another goat. Then whose sound was that? Then Chani thought of the dangerous wolf who lived in the hills. She felt scared. Then she remembered the dangerous wolf who lived in the hills. And Chani felt scared. She enjoyed the whole day. But at night, when she heard the growling, she felt scared. Should she go back to the safety of Abu Khan's hut? No. She said to herself, Death in an open field is far better than life in a small hut. So she felt scared and she thought should, should see, she go back to the safety of Abu Khan's hut. Then she said to herself, death in open field, that means death in freedom is far better than life in a small hut. So she was brave, she was courageous. The wolf had come out of the bushes and was staring greedily at Chandni. So wolf, it was actually wolf growling. He came out of bushes and he started staring at Chandni in a greedy way as if he wants to eat up Chandni completely. His eyes were shining like burning coals in the darkness. He seemed in no hurry. He knew the new goat was his. So his eyes were shining like burning coals. And he was not in hurry because he knew that Chandni was such weak creature and he would easily defeat her. Chandni was his. The wolf and the goat sized up each other. Sized up means to look carefully in order to act accordingly. They looked each other carefully. The wolf was big and ferocious. Ferocious means big and powerful. The wolf, he was big, he was powerful. Whereas Chani, the goat, she was healthy was but was small. And she was small but she was not weak. So Chani stood firm on her legs. Head slightly bent and horns jutting out. So she was in a position of attack. Her horns were jutting out, going out in order to attack. She was a picture of courage. She was really courageous in front of that ferocious wolf. She looked like a brave soldier ready to fight a treacherous enemy. Treacherous means unfaithful. So she was standing there like a soldier who was ready to fight his unfaithful enemy. I must put up a good fight, Chani thought. Success or failure is a matter of luck or chance. So Chani being brave, she was very brave. She thought to herself that I must face this wolf. Whether I succeed or fail, it's a matter of chance, but I must fight. The fight began. It went on through the night. The moon, which had been watching the fight, began to grow pale. So now the fight began and it went on through the whole night. The moon who was watching the fight whole night, it also began to hide. It also became pale, suddenly hid behind the clouds. So moon was also going and the stars also began to disappear one by one. So the fight happened whole night and it was morning coming. A faint light appeared in the east and the morning call for prayer came from distant mosque. So it was morning fight. The fight happened whole night. The first ray of the sun saw Chani lying on the ground. She was completely soaked in blood. The wolf, tired and sleepy, was getting ready to devour her. Devour means eat her up. So, it was morning. Chani was completely soaked in blood and the wolf was tired and sleepy. He was ready to eat her up. An assembly of birds. Assembly means group of birds. Perched. Perched means rest on something. So an assembly of birds was perching on a tree nearby and they were debating the result of the fight. Who is the winner? One of them asked. So one of them asked who is the winner? The wolf of course. Most of them said. So since wolf was there, he was alive. So most of them said wolf is the win winner. A wise bird declaimed their confidence but a wise bird declaimed it. 
opposed their confidence and said chandni is the winner so students who do you think is the winner is this wolf or is it chandni do comment and tell me the story is by zakir hussain now i hope you have got the answer of the first question i asked in the beginning of the story now you can go through the question answers which i have written here you can pause the video and see the question answers so at every page of question answer you can just pause the video and note them down so this was about the chapter chandni student do let me know your opinion about chandni and why do you think she is the winner or why do you think she is not the winner thank you for listening to this beautiful story students i will see you in my next video